please. <laughs> so, uh, I have to blush. <laughs> so don't be the DJ. We'll have a conversation with you later on. You'll get to know him. But you know the protocol. But don't ever send in your request to eSacket. I'm a Y254. That's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, Pierre, what do you want to send me? Domi the DJ. At Domi the DJ. At Domi the DJ everywhere. It's ever. So, Kabisa. Now, earlier, I was talking about Chiluba. I was talking Chiluba music. I was talking about Chiluba dance. I was talking about Chiluba Chiluba. Every social media. That distinction that we're talking about. So, welcome back to the East Side Chiluba. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You're a choreographer, you're a singer songwriter, yeah, but you're very passionate about both, yeah, 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 because you know, uh, dance and music go hand in hand, yeah, you and you like it's natural. So, you're constantly creating in the realm of music every time, every time, but why that distinction, especially mm -hmm. on your social media? Uh, because there's Chiluba dance on Instagram, and yet there's also Chiluba music. Uh, just a correction there. Yeah. Uh, we made that correction with my team, so yeah. now it's strictly Chiluba the one. Say ni Chiluba, Chiluba the, the one. one. That's on Instagram, and the rest is just Chiluba. The rest is Chiluba. Yeah, so, yeah. Nini Glad to have you back. Yeah. <laughs> because I was having a conversation with him earlier. I was like, where did you go on social media? Because I remember I was following uh, dance and music. Yeah. So now it's Chiluba the, Chiluba one, the one on strictly. every social media platform. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you did a tour recently. You went to Europe. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that experience because you were, you know, constantly working whenever you were here in Nairobi. You were co either choreographing or making music or, you know, doing your own videos because now you're an established artist on your own right. You're no longer choreographing for any other artist. Yeah. So tell me about that experience now, cheering for yourself. Um, the tour was dope. Um, because, uh, you know, us dancers from Kenya, choreographers, we don't get to tour that much. Uh, because uh, lately, Afrobeats, the Afrobeats scene has taken uh, everything. As a storm. So most, most of the guys are touring are Nigerians, Ghanaians, South Africans. So it was a big thing for me as a, as a Kenyan dancer, East African, to go and teach dance in Europe. Yeah. You get it, it showed that uh, I have the levels. Because I'm teaching things those guys teach but on another level, and that was a good experience to but show them. But they can't chukucha the way we chukucha. Like, uh, <laughs> there's also that kind of mentality where, uh, oh, white people can't dance, or yeah. blah, blah. Those guys can dance. It's just the same way we do their, all, we, their stuff really good. Mm. We have really dope rappers, and rap came from the other side. So those guys out there also can dance. It's just how... It's, now we're like level, level ground. So mm. to Shindan is also on that level. Because of the internet now, I can't really say that I can do something better than a white person uh -huh. or vice versa. Now we're in the same level. Kaende, kaende. Kaende, kaende. Now, <laughs> yeah. And what about uh, in terms of music now? Yeah. Uh, do you feel like now we're leveled? Because uh, there's always been that conversation. Uh, first of all, they were like, no, Kenya has no content. And we know we have content. Mm. Then uh, there was like, uh, we're not working hard enough in terms of music. Yeah. Uh, do you feel we're leveled in that realm of music and not just dance as well? Uh, that thing, uh, we had uh, that really long conversation about play Kenyan music, and yeah. you know it was a long one. I was always making noise on Twitter, Instagram, I was there, and I didn't believe on this thing. Kenyan artists are not working hard because I'm one of them, and I know my colleagues, I know guys are working. Yeah. I've worked with so many superstars across Africa, I know they are working. Uh, content wise again there is there let me let me confirm to you that we have content why are people now jamming to songs like Wam Lambez and all those yes yeah. two years ago they used to say that song doesn't have content yeah. you get so it's just uh, we need to change how we think it's basically just the, the mentality you the get. perspective it's just how you look at it you now Do you feel like are, uh, as Kenyans we're not mm -hmm. really appreciating our own in terms of entertainers yeah, we don't. It's it's known. It's known all over. We don't appreciate what is ours. It's a it's a problem that uh, I can't say I'm also the best because I've been there. You know, before I started doing music, I used to hate on Kenyan musicians just because I didn't know what goes in behind the scenes. Now yeah. that I do, I see it from a whole new level. It's not what I used to think. So, uh, what do you mean uh, exactly? Uh, I used to say, oh, uh, Kenyan musicians don't have content, yeah. or their stuff is not quality enough. But as a musician, you get to know the challenges these guys go through. And you know, most musicians across Kenya and generally Africa, 
they fund themselves. Mm. In the US, you, you judge a Kenyan or an, an African artist on, on that level, yet these guys have big record labels which put in millions Backing of dollars them, yeah. to push a project, you get. And here you're pushing it yourself. Yeah, here, for example, I'm a choreographer. I have to make money from the choreography, yeah. pay all the bills that are, that are outstanding, and then the music, again, you have to pay for everything. The videos, the recording. Yeah, so, yeah, somebody out there has a budget of $1 million for one project. Out there, $1 million, that's like $100 million. And that is for an average artist there. And mm. here, you can't even talk of one million for one project you get. Because. Yeah, so it's just the reality that maybe fans out there don't know. Mm. It comes with so many things attached to it. Mm. Yeah, but the music itself, I think it's really dope. Quality-wise, we are coming up slowly We're by slowly. Up. Yeah. I like that, I like that. Now you used to work uh, with, uh, I don't know if you're still working with them, you used to choreograph for Saudi Soul. Mm. Uh, uh, there was an interview you did last year with Christian mm. Kiai on the mm. East Circuit. You were saying, the most important uh, part was learning from them yeah. and understanding the music business because you were ready to jump in and just dive in and dominate it, which sure. you're doing now. Yeah. Uh, what do you feel you've learned so far by yourself, not just from that experience uh, touring with them, now you as an artist? Uh, I learned uh, one thing in music. It's mostly like the main thing is just the marketing of the, of the, of the song. It's not even, sometimes you've had average songs being very big hits. That's the reality of the business. Mm. Sometimes the, the marketing is everything. And some of these songs from TZ and, and Nigeria, they're just well marketed. Some of them are just average songs which are well marketed. Well marketed. That, that is something I've learned. So if we can get that, fill that gap, unfortunately that gap comes with budget. Mm. Most of the time. The budget you're that, talking about earlier. Yeah, the budget really, how do you think Sets you Beyonce's apart. album mm. gets to us? It's a budget. There's a budget which makes For sure marketing that, and pushing song, that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some people will argue and say, oh, Wamlambez is big and maybe they didn't have budget. But as a businessman, you don't look at chance. You, you don't write a song hoping it will go viral. You get it happens once in a while. Not all songs go viral. So you can't hope for that. It can happen. You don't know. You don't know that that's the song gets to a level where it just carries itself. Mm. But mainly you have to, do the you work. Have to push it. Yeah. You get. Yeah. And do you think that's uh, on us, the artists, or is it the media or is it uh, the PR executives? We're not really pushing our music outside. Uh, what mm. do you think? Uh, Who's to blame in this situation? I don't think it's... For, for now, I don't think I will blame anyone. Yeah. I just feel, uh, again, the mentality of how we look at our artists. Because sometimes uh, I'm, I'm, I might send a song to, to a DJ. That song might have my name. Yeah. But I, the same song can be sent by a bigger, like a bigger PR firm. The same song, they will not open that email from me, but they might open it from that PR the firm. PR firm. You yeah, get. Yeah. So imagine how many artists don't have the access to, to the PR the, the firm, PR firm which funds. will do that. You get. So yeah. that means there's so many songs which go unheard. Otherwise, the DJ might have liked the song, and actually, because if DJs like your song, they, it will be a big song if they push it. They, they, it will be a big So it's song. all about the marketing and uh, you know how yeah. it's pushed. Because for me, I have, I have DJs who play my songs and yeah. we have never met. Mm. You get, you just sent the email and they happen to open it, like the stuff. And, and now playing I'm it. getting calls. Yo, your song is played somewhere, blah, 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 both in Kenya and outside Kenya, you get. Yeah. So yeah, it means us artists should, uh, the DJs and media should be ready to, to check out what are these artists giving out, you get. Yeah. Nice. Now, now to you, Chiluba, the artist. Yeah. We were having a discussion earlier about now uh, the type of music you're planning to do. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Yeah. So uh, for me lately, I've been doing Afropop. Uh, and uh, for me, I love Afropop. Very many people love Afropop. But uh, it's, it's, it's becoming more difficult to, to push Afropop in, 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 it's in Kenya. It's a bit too monotonous yeah, now. Yeah. At, at the moment. And yeah. it's, 
I'm, I'm trying to look for words. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the Genge tone uh, sound is really picking up, yeah. which is a good thing. Because yeah. for me, I'm happy. I'm not doing that style, but I'm happy because for once, we have like five of the biggest songs in Kenya are Kenyan. Yeah. For once. For it, once. La last year, the same time, it wasn't the same There's case. There's more acceptance because of the yeah. diversification. Yeah, so it, it gives, yeah. a, gives us a challenge. But again, I believe nothing is impossible still. Yeah, uh, nothing is impossible because uh, the new guys like Ben Sol are still doing it and it's, it's causing conversations. Uh, so I think it's possible, it's just a little bit harder. Yeah. So it's now up to me as an artist to see, am I ready to push it like, or am I ready to conform to now the, the, the well, new What the style? media is playing yeah, at Exactly, the so it's now up to the artist and the strategies with him and the team. Mm. what makes sense for, for you. Uh, that individuality part as yeah. an artist and you know in your own creative space, yeah. that is the most difficult part, right? Yeah. Because you, you, you're like, if I want to succeed like those people, I need to make music like those people, but yeah. maybe that's not your style, right? Yeah, some, sometimes, especially this happens with uh, signed artists. Mm. Some of these signed artists, you, you, you might find that they don't, li they've released a song, they're really pushing it, but they don't like it if you ask them in person. Yeah. That happens here in, in Africa and mostly in the US. Because if you look at uh, uh, some songs from, I was watching uh, an, a documentary for Tony, Tony Braxton. Yeah. She says she didn't like that song, Spanish Guitar, which was one of her biggest hits. Because the, 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 the label said you have to do this song. Ah. You get so some artists have to do it just because of the strategies their teams have. Mm. But yeah, uh, because these are business uh, decisions. They're not just an art artistic mm. decision. It's a business decision. What will make money? So you find that a big artist says, "My biggest hit wasn't even my, my the song I liked." You get so yeah, that's what ah. it is. Yeah. Nice, nice. We had a question <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Hmm? You're already smiling. Yeah, I want to explain the question. Here's the <laughs> scenario. You're in a relationship, then something happens, you're turned off. So the question was, what's your biggest turn off in a relationship? Am I, you know, within any type of relationship? Uh, I, I guess maybe people, especially nowadays, for me, what really turns off, turns me off from people, ladies. Yeah. B being real, guys are not real at all. Mm. Guys are really pretending. Ah. Yeah. Ah. That, like the pretense now is so, so much. It's extreme. So yeah, and uh, Instagram generation. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm really when, when I'm just interacting with somebody, I, I try to look for that. I, the, uh, and it's someone so, who's it's genuine. Not, yeah, it's not hard to, to, to get it. It's so easy. Yeah. So yeah, I might stop talking to you, and you're the hottest chick. Speaking of but getting you don't it. Don't know. Speaking of getting why. it. Yeah. Did you get one? Because I'm sure the lady fans want to know, is Chiluba <laughs> still single or is Chiluba available? Or the kwa Chiluba the one on Tafute? Slide pale kwa DM. <laughs> Slide pale kwa DM. Washa skia. Alafu msupa wangu do atareply. Apo mechomo bana. Atareply. Apo mechomo bana. Atareply. Eh? But you're doing big things yeah. though. Uh, you recently did, uh, we're about to uh, premiere a song that you did with Maxi Priest. Yeah. I'm sure you're excited about that one. Yeah, Tell that us was, about uh, Say I. Uh, that was a big project. I've been talking about it for so long. Uh, we worked with Maxi Priest, one of the biggest reggae stars in the world. And uh, I, I just give thanks. You know, I, I always tell myself, it's not that I'm the best Kenyan artist he, he saw in this. Uh, in this country, it's not I'm the bear. I just feel it was a chance I got. Yeah, you get. I yeah. I, I feel like, cause he could have easily worked with Waire, very easily. But it you was get. you. But yeah, in a way, we things just happened my way, and uh, we did a song that was actually nice. It's not that, oh, we we the song sounds nice because of Maxi Priest. The song is a good song even if Maxi Priest is not in the song. Mm. So it's, it's a blessing and the fact that he came down to Kenya and we shot a, a really dope video. Uh, it's, I, I feel like uh, it was a really humbling uh, in, uh, thing. And I got to talk to him. Nowadays I talk to him like, like buddies, just any, anybody else. Yeah. I can just text him. And so I ask him this question about the industry because he knows the things. How to that, navigate the industry. Yeah, he's been singing since the 80s he was a star since the 80s so mm. you imagine and he's still 
touring right now. Mm. So imagine how much knowledge he, ha he has. Uh, uh, as we conclude, uh, yeah. what's the biggest thing you've learned from Maxi Priest? Uh, Maxi told me one thing. He told me, stop buying things to impress people. Wow. Just invest your money. That's Just what I was saying that. in the morning. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah, where, where is Yves Nyaga? Yves Nyaga is <laughs> yeah, watching. When, when he was in Kenya, he, he, he was so excited about just taking an Uber. Because yeah. that's not the life he's used to. He used to be so much attention. And he was so excited. We, we were walking in town and nobody starts to stare. And he was really excited about that. And he wasn't dressed in flashy stuff. He just told me he was an artist, should not buy things to impress people just invest your money and he told me he has invested in real estate all over the world mm. you get yeah and that's why he's still relevant because yeah. he's, he has more time to focus on the music because that he's guy not wasting his money yeah. 10 months a year like he's always touring always touring yeah even when he came here he just s s told like three days from his tour we shoot then he got back on the road that's awesome yeah so i learned from him and we we still talk and he's connecting me to bigger artists so we just keep talking yeah nice uh yeah. like i said earlier on we're about to play chiluba featuring maxi priest uh say i but before that mr chiluba thank you so much for coming through thank you <laughs> camera number four is yours tell us where we can find you and where to subscribe yeah what's up everybody it's your boy chiluba and you can find me on instagram at chiluba the one actually i was thinking of calling myself the fake chiluba but <laughs> chiluba the one on Instagram and Chiluba the one on Twitter, Chiluba Facebook and anywhere else you feel like looking for me, mm. Chiluba, yeah, mm. yeah.